Greetings. Have you heard about being at the right place at the right time? Yes, that's right. Our today's guest is a cancer fighter from a rare cancer, which is only from 642 patients all around the world. And that's not all. That cancer is only treated in two countries. One is United States, the second one is Australia. Yeah, even in US, there's only four places it's being treated. Imagine that getting a news of that rare cancer and most of the people who are diagnosed with that cancer, their lifespan is only one year or less. However, our guest today has, has hope and determination. He already fought for over two years and counting. Please join me to give a warm welcome to our guest, Abdul Jabbar Mehman. He is presently serving as a Consular General of Pakistan in Los Angeles Consulate. Welcome, Abdul Jabbar Mehman Saab. Uh, Sadiq Saab, thank you very much for uh, your visit to uh, Consulate General of Pakistan, Los Angeles today, and providing me an opportunity uh, to, um, in a way, describe some kind of the ordeal or a challenge which I have gone through in the last couple of years. Uh, but I believe as a Muslim that, uh, or as a, even a true human being that, whatever challenges uh, come across to you in your life, if you really fight it well, then, then God always help you. It was 2018 April when I experienced some kind of uh, blood strains in my stool. So, so normally I'm a lazy guy. I avoid to go to doctors and, you know, feel it's, it's in a way really um, very bothering to visit doctors and getting the prescriptions and checkups and all that. But this time I, th I don't know, but something I think from the maybe from some doors which compelled me that I immediately rushed to doctor and, and, and discuss with him about the experience uh, which I've been really the problem which I've been facing. So doctor immediately then suggested uh, for um, some kind of tests and um, he, he advised me to immediately go for colonoscopy. So in Cedrus and I hospital, I went for colonoscopy and unfortunately they diagnosed, they find, found out that I have mucosal melanoma in my rectum. Uh, it's melanoma is, is a very common cancer, which is normally being, uh, you know, even in United States of America, there are thousands of patients and they are being treated. But this was unfortunately in internal linings in my rectum. So in a way is being considered as a rare one, very unique and very lethal too. So after a few days when bio, uh, biopsy re report was revealed to me, so I rushed to my doctor and, and asked him, Okay, what now can be done in such a, in a very precarious situation? Is there any uh, oncologist available here who can treat this, uh, this very rare and unique cancer? So being at right time at right place also one should consider as a blessing of Allah. No doubt I was at right time at right place. So he told me that unfortunately this is such a rare and unique uh, a pro problem that there are only 642 patients all over the world who have uh, encountered with the, this this kind of cancer. And then second fear, which he told me that this is a cancer which uh, which has a hundred percent recurrence rate within five years span of span of time if it's left untreated. So then he recommended me to visit uh, Cedar Sinai Hospital. There was one oncologist, um, Dr. Umid Hamid. So I went over to him and, and just discussed with him and he told me that you are the third patient which he would be uh, treating uh, because uh, it's very rare. And seeing its lethality in a way, he suggested that we won't be able to save your rectum and uh, we have to remove it because once if it is sprayed in the body, then it would be def very difficult to save your life. So me and my wife instantly decided that life is precious and we should not be worried about whatever uh, as a consequence of surgery is, is going to happen. So he then admitted me in St. John Providence Hospital and um, I underwent for eight and a half hours long surgery and they removed my rectum. Since then I am on my 
ostomy bag is a permanent feature now in my life which has in a way changed my lifestyle but i have not lost hope i am i am leading my life as a as a very normal person performing my office uh, duties in my office regularly uh, without any fail i the only first month i remained bedridden and, and remained in uh, confined to my house since then until now i have not taken even one day off from my job i come over to my office every day i i i, I go on my all visits uh, to the other cities even other states which which falls under my jurisdiction so i never lost hope fighting with cancer um, the the main message that the, i would like to broadcast for all my people that fighting with cancer only you know it's your you you know your resilience and your courage that that the more you will you know will be preoccupied with this problem that you have cancer the the more you will be in trouble so i never laid uh, this problem to be dominant on my mind and and i i passed on my life my family no doubt supported me a lot my son my wife and um, even for americans i would like to say it's, it's, it's a news that this is a this is a problem which is being treated in in us only at four places that's the philadelphia los angeles chicago and atlanta there are four places where this disease is being treated otherwise even this facility for the treatment for this disease for this kind of cancer is not available across usa and all over the world there are two countries only in uh, usa and australia where this problem this this cancer is being treated so you can very well imagine that had i not been here in los angeles i would have not been able to get it treated in any other part of the world and maybe even it would have not been diagnosed by the doctors because they were not having experience for this kind of disease so i i consider myself very blessed and very thankful to god that i was at right time at right place and really uh, got a, a very um, an appropriate treatment by a very uh, you know um, um, knowledgeable uh, oncologist dr umid hamid and uh, i i normally whenever i visit to him and tell him you are angel because he is the head of the angels clinic which is affiliated with the cedar sinai and uh, one more aspect that this is the only cancer which is not being even uh, treated with the chemotherapy chemotherapy is not effective is not compatible for uh, this so it's the only immunotherapy which is effective and uh, with which i'm having the sessions every 15 days in cedar sinai angels clinic under the supervision of dr amit hamid and thank god i am feeling well fine and uh, every passing day uh, is is becoming a you know cancer is becoming history for me and i'm feeling better than what i was yesterday so if there is hope there is a will there is determination you can really fight with any kind of challenge as i have fought with this uh, um, this uh, cancer uh, a very rare cancer very unique cancer Uh, i i believe that i have got a second life a new life otherwise i would have been down deep in grave today had i not been in los angeles or not being at a place where this cancer is not being treated thank you very much thank you so much that's an eye opening story filled with hope and determination how to self diagnose this rare cancer uh, Sid- siddiq sir you have raised a very pertinent question with me and this was the first question which was asked by my doctor um, dr michael bush and he asked me that how did you find it out because normally we don't um, you know um, feel that there's in blood and our feces and all that then i i i told him a story that when i was 10 years or 12 years old my father used to uh, to guide us all brothers that sometime you know occasionally you keep watching the color of your urine and sometime check your feces get some problem so that immediately can be approached to doctor so he jumped on his seat in a big surprise that your father in 1960 was so visionary that in today in 21st century even we don't teach these kind of things to our us students in our schools and colleges and go pray for your father because he has saved your life this was the guidance which you followed religiously today has saved your life so so it, it's it's uh, uh, that's why at the very start of my conversation i told you that there was some kind of indication from really some from somewhere that i took uh, when i found it experience it three days because even if i had been in my hometown in sindh hyderabad tandojam my mother or my auntie would have asked me ke spagol have a spagol ki bhusi you will be fine 
and 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 Sadiq Bhai was above all my brother. After those three first three days, I never experienced in the next four weeks even a single drop of blood in my feces. I could conveniently ignore it, but I remained. So it's also a message for those people: don't leave these small things unattended. I tell you, this can be be a, a mountain out of mold for you. So take these small health medical issues very seriously. Get those examined timely and it can save your life as I'm living here because this is the cancer which has life span of only one year if once is sprayed in the body. Uh, it's uh, almost, uh, I think, uh, around two years by now because uh, I think in coming May, I will complete my two years uh, after my surgery. Oh. So, you know, it's pretty good prognosis. Um, I'm doing my exercises, doing my work in my office, eating well. And uh, I have no any, um, you know, physical handicap or any serious side effect. Yes, small pity associated, uh, you know, um, uh, issues arises, which I immediately rush to my doctor. And th those are being fixed up there. Mm -hmm. But nothing serious. Alhamdulillah, with the grace of God, I am doing well. Thank you so much. That's an eye opening story filled with hope and determination. Those little things have a huge impact in life. Yes, indeed, we should take health matters seriously. You touched upon level of hope and determination. How someone can get this level of courage, will, and determination to fight this type of rare cancer? It's also very well raised question. I'm, I'm, let me be very honest. I'm I'm from temperamentally very timid person, and uh, when it was discovered, when it was informed to me by my doctor on my phone, I was sitting in my office. My wife was working um, as a sonologist just adjacent to my office in some clinic. I just called her and I said, "It has, it's positive, and I, I have a cancer, and not the cancer is very serious cancer." So I walked over to her office, and uh, by that during that. Five, 10 minutes walk to her office I just asked I was just praying to God uh, one prayer that you have to give me strength because if I don't have a courage to fight this uh, you know this kind of problem I will I may defeat get defeat by this cancer so this was the first prayer I tell you it was happily answered by my, my God and uh, the kind of courage trust me in last in around two years time it's only the people right now as you you are interviewing me and you are asking me that i have a cancer or any visitor come over to me and ask me uh, how are you how are feeling otherwise i don't even remember it in 24 hours of time that i'm a patient of cancer so courage will your determination i tell you in my case it has played a major role subsequent role in, in substantial role in in in, in you know addressing my this health grievance. Anything you would like to add, which I did not get around to it? Thank you very much, Siddiq Saab. Um, I think the main major questions um, I have, you have you raised very good, appropriate questions and have already answered. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, being in Los Angeles, uh, treatment is very expensive, and uh, getting the, this kind of disease treated. Uh, through your own means or even government of Pakistan's means would have cost too much to my family and my government as well. But uh, one thing I want to tell you that uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly a political statement, but one thing, and it connects somewhat to our religion as well, that I am a Muslim patient and the hospital which is treating me is being run by the, you know, the Jews and uh, my insurance is American insurance company where I pay monthly in peanuts and they have almost spent half a million dollar on my my health issues without considering that i am which cost color creed or religion i belong to so this is the spread this this has really uh, in a way created much faith in my heart uh, in, in the in the concept of interfaith harmony not a single uh, assistant medical staff working in that uh, angels clinic who's christian or uh, or jew or non-muslim has ever let me feel that they can they, they would have discriminated or delayed in getting me treatment they have accepted me with open arms and they have given me the state of art first-hand treatment first-class treatment 
which otherwise I it, I think even would have not been available to me in, in Pakistan as well. Mm -hmm. So this is the message. What would you say as a final word? Um, we are Muslims, Siddiq Saab, we are Muslims. We believe that if my time is over, I have to be in grave, I will go into grave. And uh, if I'm, I have to live, I have to live. So whatever the time you have in your life, really serve to the humanity, serve to the people and, and look after your, your community. As a consul general, um, I never uh, allowed my disease to be dominant on me. And in any way, I have, I have shown any kind of lethargy in, 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 and being lazy in serving to my people. I'm serving my people with the same enthusiasm, with the same vigor, with the same vitality and would continue until the last day I live in this world. Thank you so much, Abdul Jabbar Mehman Sahib, for sharing your wisdom, life story and inspiration and hope with full of determination with all of us on the behalf of Growth Hacking Show community and our entire team, we really appreciate you. This is Mohammed Siddiq from Atlanta, Georgia, wishing you good luck and all best wishes.